Today, I'm being vulgar again. What's the similarity between women and wiper blades? They both squeal when they're not wet. Nice. I'm at the Monaco Grand Prix. And disaster happens. Nay! 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 What good is the Hunter Hoffman back with insane content? In this video, we're gonna do some maintenance on this high mileage puppy. Unfortunately, I make a very, very expensive mistake. So let's see what happened. Okay, so what exactly is high mileage? As you could have seen by the title of the video, the car has done almost 200,000 kilometers. For my American friends, that's 124,000 miles. So unlike regular maintenance, like an oil change or a brake fluid change, go check out the video in the top right hand corner to see how that goes. Another kind of maintenance is required for a mileage like mine. So after going to a nice car meeting, it's time to get this puppy in the air and get started. So what do we have? We have ourselves wheel bearings that are almost 125,000 miles old. I mean, check this out. See, that's terrible. You're only doing this for new content, aren't you? Yes. So we're going to replace these with new OE wheel bearings from Optimal. So let's quickly remove the wheels and get started. All right, so now we're going to remove the caliper by removing two 18 millimeter bolts. And don't forget to remove the brake wear sensor from its bracket. Okay, and now we can simply hang the caliper from the brake line. No, of course not. With these tie wraps, we're gonna hang the caliper on the spring of the suspension. All right, so there we go, hanging from the tie wraps, no pressure on the Turner Motorsport steel braided brake lines. Go check out the video. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but the wheel bearings do make a bit of a sound. Wait, let me listen one more time. Help! <gasps> so next up, we're gonna remove these retainer bolts holding the disc down to the bearing. Oh no! The retainer bolts are stripped! Who did that? <laughs> it was me. We stripped them before. So because we're changing the bearings anyway, we're just going to drill out these retainer bolts. I have also bought some new retainer bolts, so we can just carry on. Nay! 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 Oh, nay! Nay! All right, so that actually happened uh, a couple of hours ago. Uh, I feel like a complete idiot. Uh, I, I just didn't see it coming. Um, I was, you know, as you can see, I was drilling out the bolts, holding down the disc to the wheel bearing, not taking into account that once the bolts were drilled, nothing would retain the disc on the wheel bearing, of course. So a very, very expensive mistake for my part. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the thing fell into pieces on the floor, on the concrete floor. This is where I drilled the, uh, the retainer bolts, holding down the disc, uh, and this is the disc in pieces. Wait, what? Wait, what? Psych. All right, so after professionally trolling you all, we're now gonna remove the heat shield. So we're gonna remove three 10 millimeter bolts.
So now we're going to give the heat shield a quick clean. There we go. All right, so to undo the wheel bearing, we need to remove four TP60 bolts. These four to be precise, along with the ABS sensor to the left. Before we do so, however, let me tell you something about the carbon ceramic discs. All right, so unlike a steel brake disc where you can visibly inspect if it's worn, a carbon ceramic disc would need to be weighed. So BMW instructs you to first clean your disc before weighing it. So I did by removing all the carbon dust that piled up over time. The disc itself tells you what its minimal weight should be. So then for the results. As you can see, it's well within spec, which is great news. Interestingly enough, the other disc was pretty much the exact same weight. So another way of assessing the wear of your carbon ceramic disc is by looking at the indicators on the disc itself. There are six of them per disc, three on the outside and three on the inside. A new indicator looks like this, and a used one like this. And this is what mine look like, and that after almost 200,000 kilometers. God, what a good car this is. All right, so now we're gonna undo the bearing with a TP60 and a breaker bar. And that's the last one. Also, don't forget the ABS sensor. There we go. And that's the ABS sensor removed. All right, so now we're gonna hammer away since this thing is super stuck on there because of all the corrosion. Ah, uh, there we go. And that's one bearing removed. That's one crusty bearing, almost 200,000 kilometers old. So we're now gonna clean the face of the hub since, well, this looks pretty much terrible. We're gonna use the wire wheel and a lots of brake cleaner, and then we'll get it pretty again. So let's go ahead and do that now. Then we're gonna quickly use a brush to clean things up. All right, so now that we've cleaned up the face of the hub with the wire wheel, some brake cleaner, and a normal brush, along with the ABS sensor. It's time to install the new bearing along with the new bolts. So let's do this. So obviously this notch goes down there. First, we're gonna do one bolt by hand. So that's one. Now for the other three. So then we're gonna reinstall the ABS sensor with a T30. So now we're going to torque these bolts to spec. And now all the bolts would need to make an additional 90 degree turn. I'm going to do that off camera. So Hunter, let's continue with the heat shield. Thank you, Hunter. So to reinstall the heat shield, we're going to use three 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so now the, hello everyone, hello. Uh, so now the final piece of the puzzle is to reinstall our still in very good condition carbon ceramic brake disc. So let's carefully do this with the emphasis on carefully. Here we go. Careful, careful, careful. Touchdown. So now we're going to grab our new retainer bolts. One over here and one over here, then torque them to spec. All right, so the final piece of the puzzle is obviously to reinstall the caliper. And then we can simply reuse the old bolts. <sighs> no, of course not. We're going for new bolts. These are one-time use bolts. Apparently they went from a regular bolt to a e-torx bolt. And finally, we're gonna torque the bolts to spec. And that's a job well done. So now to put the wheel back on off camera and uh, call it a day. It's already after midnight, so um, lots more to do tomorrow. 
All right, so today's a new day. We're gonna replace the wiper blades, but first let me show you why. All right, so let me first turn down the music. This is also something we need to address. The squealing wiper blades, really annoying. All right, so as you could have heard, the wiper blades make a lot of noise. What's the similarity between women and wiper blades? They both squeal when they're not wet. Nice. Okay, so we're starting out by pushing in these tabs and sliding the old wipers out. Gently put this back on the glass. Take off the protective cover of the new one. And reinstall it the same way. That's one. And that's two. All right, that's a job well done. Time to relax. <sighs> That was a hard job. <laughs> Alright, so that was very relaxing. I even managed to get a haircut in between. So we're gonna replace all the pulleys and all the belts on the BMW. I'm unaware if the belts were ever changed, so it's a good idea to get these replaced along with the pulleys. I bought an OE tensioner pulley, and an OE idler pulley, and an OEM idler pulley. It literally has the BMW logo scratched away. Just for like a quarter of the price. Crazy how that works in the world of car parts. All right, so enough of the babbling, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, so to get to the pulleys and the belts, we would need to remove these parts. All right, so to get to the serpentine belt, we would first need to remove the belt of the water pump, which is this one. It's going to be very challenging, as BMW will obviously states to remove the whole fan cowl, to remove the coolant lines, to remove these oil lines. But I'm going to be stubborn here, and we're going to all do it in this very tight space. I'm very handy with my fingers in tight spaces, so um, I think we'll manage. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the removal of the belt of the water pump. So with the 22 and a breaker bar, we're going to rotate the crankshaft over there so that this hole over there is oriented perpendicular to the crankshaft. And afterwards, we would be able to remove those four 10 millimeter bolts. And then we're going to spin the crankshaft some more until eventually the pulley of the water pump will pop off. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that seems good to me. So now we're going to loosen those four bolts. Don't drop these. So now we're going to rotate the crank until the pulley shoots off. See, there it goes. So that's the belt now loose. So this is the belt of the water pump. As you can see, it is around seven years old, so a very good time to replace that now. So next up is for us to remove that 10 millimeter bolt over there so that we can move these oil lines a bit back and remove the serpentine belt altogether. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, there we go. Oh, look at all that space. Look at that. Yeah, that's way better. So let's continue with the serpentine belt. All right, so with the Torx 55 and this rather small breaker bar, we're going to release the tension of the tensioner. So let's see if I can do this with this small breaker bar. This might take some force, but luckily I'm a big boy. <laughs> All right, and then with my other hand, I'm going to stick in this Allen key in here. Yep, there we go. Uh, and that's the tension. Oh, God. Oh. All right, there we go. All right, so now to get this puppy out. Let's 
going to be hard getting this back in. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Finally. I look. So both these belts are from 2017, meaning that they've never been replaced. So good that we're replacing them. So next up, we're going to remove all the pulleys. We're going to start with the tensioner pulley up here. So we're going to remove the tension by releasing the Allen key that we put in. There we go. That's the tension removed. All right. So I found out eventually <laughs> that um, I'm able to remove the tensioner pulley with a ratchet and a swivel socket like this and an E12. And that's all without removing any oil lines or coolant lines. So let's give this a try. Yes, there we have it. <laughs> God, I'm a genius. We're not going to remove anything. We're just going to do it with everything in the way. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So that's the bolt uh, removed. And, and now for the pulley. Let's see if we can maneuver this bad boy out of here. Oh, please, this has to come out this way. Okay, uh, I'm going to see how I'm going to get this out. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, I have an idea. So I'm not able to get the... Uh, tensioner pulley out. It's, it's lying over there. So I'm going to take out this pulley to see if we can get enough space to remove the tensioner pulley. So we're first going to remove this cap. Yes, there we have it. That's a rather tight spot, isn't it? Uh, hmm. I've got an idea though. So this is what I come up with. Um, a TP55 bit wrapped around with some tie wraps on this wrench. Hey! Oh no! Okay, that didn't work. Alright, so that didn't go according to plan. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove the oil filter cap and siphon out the oil in the oil filter housing so that we can then remove these oil lines, push them to the side, and then we will be able to reach that pulley. Hopefully. All right, so the first good news is that we can now grab our old tensioner pulley. There we go. All right, so although the oil leakage isn't ideal, uh, I should have done this in the first place. So we're going to guide these lines down there. One, two. Yes, look at that. So now we have free space to... Um, Finally undo this pulley. Where's my breaker bar? Here we go. Oh yes, that's it. Oh yes, finally. All right, you ready? There we go, finally. All right, so then this is the last pulley that we're going to remove. We're gonna bust out the breaker bar with a E12. Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, almost dropped it. There we go. Pulley and bolt removed. All right, so here we have our old pulleys and our new pulleys. What I think is pretty interesting are the build dates. So this was apparently the original tensioner pulley as it's from 2017, just like the car. We're going to a build date 2023. Uh, this is also original 2017 and a 2023 build date. And then and this one is, I believe, you see the 13 over there? I believe this is a build date 13 because the new one says 23 on it. So I presume that's the build date of the uh, pulleys. 
And that's probably a more generic example of a pulley. It was probably laying on the shelf, and that's why it's an older model. But I'm not sure. So, what else? This is a BMW part, obviously. Just like this, and just like this. However, hey. <laughs> Got you. So these are all BMW parts, uh, but this and this one are OE parts made by Ina. But if we look at the BMW part, BMW, guess by who it's made? Ina. I'll put the price of the original part on screen now. And let's compare that to the OE part. And let's do the same for these two. That's crazy, right? All right, so I thought that was really interesting. Not sure about you guys, but um, we're gonna go ahead and install this on. God damn it. Yeah, I got it again. <laughs> Anywho, let's go ahead and install this on the car. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and saw this pin a bit off because I wasn't able to get it in with the pin still being this long. So let's see how this goes. Ah, that's better. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. So now we're gonna install this bolt again. All right, so just tighten it down and then you'll be fine. No, of course not. We're gonna torque them to spec. Next up, we're gonna do the pulley down there. Not sure if you can see anything, but um, you'll just have to trust me, bro. Is it in yet? All right. Then we're also gonna torque this to spec. There we go. And then for the last pulley, which goes over there, we're gonna twist it in by hand as far as possible. And also torque this to spec. All right. And then we're going to pop on this dust cap. First, I'm going to go to the Monaco Grand Prix, and then we're going to pick it up next week. Insert footage. Ooh, back to reality. So beforehand, I took a picture of how the serpentine belt was routed along the pulleys. There's not much to see here for you, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wiggle it in. All right, so as you can see, the serpentine belt is now routed correctly along all the pulleys. Now for the service life of the tensioner pulley, we would need to put it under tension three times. So we've put back in the breaker bar, and with this, we're going to remove the pin. That's the pin removed. One, two, three. So that should do it. And now for the water pump belt. So that's on there. Now with the breaker bar, we're going to rotate the crankshaft to get the water pump pulley back in position. There we go. So now that hole is perpendicular to the crankshaft, which means we can tighten down the four bolts again. These would need to be torqued to spec. However, my torque wrench doesn't go low enough. So we're just gonna do them good and tight. 
We're going to rotate the crankshaft one more time to reach the lower bolt. All right, and that's all four of them good and tight. Okay, and now it's a matter of buttoning everything up again. Then off camera, I also primed the oil as we've interrupted the oil circuit. So it's a job well done and let's call it a day. All right, so that was it. Hope you enjoyed that one. It was a long one. It was a lot of work again. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing or cop yourself some insane merch. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. With these tie wraps, we're going to hang the caliper on the spring of the strut. With these tie wraps, we're going to hang the caliper on the spring of the suspension. With these tie wraps, we're going to hang the caliper from the spring. With these ca with these tie wraps, we're going to hang the caliper from uh, on. We're going to hang the uh, on the. We're going to hang it on. With these caliper. With these tie wraps, we're going to hang the caliper on the spring of the suspension. What the hell is that?